This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Syntax is the way that you type something inside of Access so that Access understands. So what we'll look at this time is the syntax for creating a calculated field inside of our queries. They're very convenient when you want to create a field in the query that does not actually exist in the table and you want it to calculate for you. You don't want to have to think. You want it to take existing information in the table and do some math with it. Let's go look at how easy it is to create. First of all, I want to create a query, so we're going to click on Create, and I personally like using the Query Design View because for me it seems to be a lot faster. Or what we want is we want to create a query with our projects. So we'll add projects, and I'll click on Close. I just double click to add those. And I actually want all of the fields in my query grid. Well, to do that quickly, all I have to do is double click the title here for projects, and every field is selected. Now I grab, excuse me, I grab one, and I drag them down into the grid, and everything is quickly and easily populated into the grid. Now it works easily this way when you want the query items to be in this particular order, which I'm fine with this particular order. So what we want is we want to add a field into our data that is a warning date. So let's go look at what we have here. We have the name of the project, the due date of the project, the employee ID number, and the project ID number. And what we've realized is that we need to be able to create a report that we send out that warns employees when they have an upcoming or a pending project to do. And we want to warn them five days in advance of the project due date that they actually have something coming up. Or maybe it's 10 days in advance. I just use the example of five. Math will work the same no matter what number you choose. And what we want is actually a new field. We'll call it warning date. But first, I'm intentionally not going to give the field a name because I want you to see how easy it is to create a calculated field first. And then memory-wise, you can decide how much of this you want to remember. I'll show you the, the easy um, memory things first. So the first thing is I need a brand new field. I go to the next empty column here in my grid. And there's a rule you need to know about access. And that is when you're dealing with existing objects, existing field names, you have to tell access they're existing by typing a square bracket. So you type a square bracket, and that indicates that when I type due date, I'm referring to an object that exists somewhere in my database. And then it'll go out and it'll figure out what object I'm talking about. And then I enclose with another square bracket. And the square brackets are on the top on your QWERTY keyboard, the Q-W-E-R-T-Y line. They're on the top. They're to the right of the P. So it's a left square bracket, the name of the object, and then a right square bracket. Now I also like to type it with the capitalization, the way that it's capitalized in the table but it is not sensitive to capitalization, it is spelling. You make sure that you spell it correctly, but your caps do not have to be accurate. And then you just do your math. I want to take the existing due date and I want to subtract five days. I want to know what is five days earlier than the existing date. Because remember, the place where I'm going to use this is a report that I send out to my employees to give them a warning of their upcoming date. And when I hit the Run button, it says, great, all right, so May 30th, 2013, five days earlier, would be May 25th, 2013. And as you take a look down here, it understood, and it subtracted five days. Now, the one thing that it doesn't do automatically is identify where weekends fall. So that's the one thing with this simple math. It's not going to say, oh, but that's a Saturday, so let's go six days here. That would involve a little more complicated information. But for us, we're just looking at how to do simple math. So let's go back, oh, excuse me, before we go back, I want you to see this field name. See how it called it EXPR1? We did not name our field, and so Access named it for us. EXPR, short for expression, expression one. Well, all I wanted you to know is how to do math. So let's review math. Anytime you have an existing field, and in our example, we use due date, you would enclose it in square brackets, and then you would just do your math. 
Now, you, maybe you're going to add two fields together or subtract two fields. Then you would do due date minus and then whatever the other field were, were also in square brackets. Well, for us, let me go back to design view. We had simply due date minus 5. If you also want to remember how to name your field, this is a great example. It says, okay, you give your field a name, you follow it with a colon, a space, and then you do your calculation. But I think it's just as easy to remember only how to do the calculation and then come back in and give your field a name. Warning date. Let's see what we get now when we run it. So now, well, let's resize that so you can see the whole thing. And it has warning date. And the reason I didn't put a space in there is to follow that naming convention that says don't use spaces. We'll put spaces in in a different method that access will not ever be confused by. So now let's get back to design view and review everything you know about how to create math. The first thing is if you want to name your field, you would actually give your field a name, follow it with a colon and a space, although that's optional because you can come back and do that at a later time. And then to do math, anytime you are dealing with the name of an object inside of your database, you always enclose that object in square brackets, and then you just follow the rules of math using the multiplication, the division, the addition, the subtraction, whatever it might be. Also, functions or formulas, you can use those as well. Almost any function or formula that you can use inside of Excel, you can use here inside of Access with one exception. If is IIF. So in Access, it's a little bit different. But other than that, try any function or formula that you're aware of, and it'll probably work for you. Good luck doing your math.